also democratic, ensuring democratic, free and open society. Now, we consider improvements in the legal and social and also political institutions as necessary con conditions for a sustained economic growth and also democratic development. Mm. And over the years, we've conducted several research. And um, for the past 26 years, I'm sure if you come to um, the Secretariat, you see an array of publications um, that show that um, we don't really just get up and say anything. And whatever we say is informed by research. And so I think somewhere around 2011, we have sub established a survey center um, to carry out, um, to begin you know, carrying out socioeconomic and governance service. And um, uh, in 2011, we did, 2012, we did, and this year, um, last year, 2013, we did, last year too, we also carried the same survey. Indeed, um, the survey findings um, were just ready at the beginning of this year. Um, Latter, uh, middle of last year, um, we started and we concluded, but um, the data entry, codification, analysis, and all that um, were ready at the beginning of this year, and so we decided to release. And we only communicated um, what the people um, we sampled see. And so um, uh, if you want to find out why um, we, we said the presidency, was the second most corrupt institution. Um, let it be on record that this is not a, an IE view. It mm. is what came out from the survey. From yeah, the I have stated that that is a survey that you did. Um, uh, number one, there's, this, there's, there's a question that is being asked. We'll get into the, there's a question that's being asked. Why the timing, the, the, the timing for the release? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> The IEA every year plans <coughs> activities as to what it wants to do. And so we had timed it that we were going to release it around this time. Indeed, um, we, three weeks um, before the time we released the results, we had indicated to the press that we were going to um, hold a press conference to release the results to them. Mm. And three weeks um, before the time, um, to the time. And so we sent invitation letters, I'm sure, um, your reporters may have received copies of the, you know, they, have, they, they may have received their own invitation letters and all that. And so um, the timing was because we had planned to do it at that time. And um, we've heard from some quarters that the timing was not appropriate because um, there was going to be a state of nations address. Mm. I think some of these things would have to be institutionalized on our political calendar. So we all know that um, at this particular point in time, or at, on this so so and so day, we would do State of Nations address. But we say that um, we had already sent out our invitation letters to the media, and later on we got to know that um, the day, the very uh, the day before, the day after, we 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 had done um, the the press conference, and the president was also going to um, um, do the uh, present the State of Nations address. In fact, if we had known, we would have postponed. Because what we are seeking to do is to influence public policy. Civil society is supposed to provide a linkage between those who are governing and those who are being governed. Okay. So now let's, let's doc, 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 thanks for that, that point. Thanks, thanks for that explanation. Can we just move on now to uh, how the survey came by that conclusion? I have read Imani, Ghana, and others. Imani, for example, tagged the chief of staff's office as a profusely wasteful chief of staff, we have been aware over the period of how the Flagstaff House overspends its budget as much as by 100% of the budgetary allocation in 2014. Beyond this, what do you think influenced <coughs> that outcome of second most corrupt institution being the presidency? Well, I don't know, but it looks as if everybody People, Ghanaians are descending, and they also take notice of whatever happens around the presidency. Um, how has the presidency dealt effectively with um, issues of corruption? Um, sometimes the silence and inaction. And then also, let's also note the fact that sometimes, and just um, during the State of the Nations address, I heard the president saying so, that sometimes even if you cause investigations into corrupt practices, um, unfortunately people perceive you or perceive that institution 
to also be be leveled with corruption. I mean, but um, that is that is what um, sometimes impressions that um, get formed in opinion of of uh, in the perception of of the minds of people. And so um, it it isn't that um, um, it is uh, it is it is the perception of the people. And I'm saying that sometimes even if you cause investigation, people mistake it or people would take it to mean that then the, the problem is quite endemic. And sometimes people are also taking note of the fact that um, so many, uh, there are so many maybe reported cases of corruption around the presidency and people wonder the kind of actions that are taken. There may be actions taken, but sometimes it's also important to get the people informed or aware of what is being done. And if they don't have um, the readily available information regarding what is being done, then they perceive um, you as corrupt. Okay. Dr. Jampo, what was the sample size again? 1,200. Okay. 1,200. Do you think that that is sufficient enough? Well, um, you can check um, surveys um, that have been conducted all over the world, and you can just refer to Afro, look at the Afro Barometer Survey, and it will tell you that, um, I mean, they all use um, a sample size around that same figure. So, mm. so the, what, what, does the, what is the IEA's own remark about this result? Well, um, if you look at the the the, yeah, the report that we issued to the press, um, we it had uh, policy implications and also recommendations that we made, and and we ourselves were quite curious. We were quite were quite curious about about uh, um, this and coming up, and and the point is that we would urge policymakers to do introspection and soul session mm. to see what is being done and what is causing this or fueling this perception. And we would also urge them to pass by the Institute, the IE Secretariat. We are hoping and prepared, we are seeking to influence public policy. Mm. And so we are prepared to share our information, the data, the methodology and everything with them so that they would know what the people are thinking and the perception of the people, the challenges um, facing the people. And if they get it from the horse's own mouth, we are sure they will be able to put in place uh, measures and policies. Okay, very final question to you. What's your reaction to government's reaction to this survey? Well, um, we were expecting um, a reaction that would have taken a kind of the sectepe approach um, to the issue. You know, recently we issued a research finding on um, the money, uh, public financial management where we spoke about the, uh, that issue. I'm sure Sir Tepe wrote, Sir Tepe wrote to us and where he wanted to disagree, he stated to, so, and where he agreed with us, he stated it in his letter. Um, he didn't undermine, make uh, remarks that sought to undermine um, our credibility and all that. Um, but unfortunately, the kind of statement that was issued um, sought to undermine us. But we are not perfect. I'm saying it that um, um, in about a couple of weeks, um, our research finding and on business uh, confidence would also be released. And this is um, the socioeconomic survey is also a yearly thing. We are going to do another one. And so I, I think what the way to go is to sit up and accept some of these things in good faith. It looks as if when it doesn't favor you, then you want to resort to name calling. <coughs> but the point is that, look, in 2009 and 2010, Professor Mills mentioned and singled out IES research work and commended us for what we're doing. Indeed, it was our research work that sought to audit the gaps in Ghana's uh, democracy that led to the recommendation for constitution review. Okay. Our research work led to the passage of the transition bill mm. um, into, into an act. And okay. we have, over the years, worked with seasoned scholars. Mentioned Professor Kwame Nahoy, Professor Chumesi, Justice D.F. Allen, um, um, uh, Mr. B.J. Darucha, Justice Ephraim Benjamin, and other international scholars like Paul Kolia, mm. Professor Safu J., mm. Professor Dr. Amuyate, etc. Et These are seasoned okay. scholars, and we, we, we don't just speak. I'm sure when people invite us to come on your program to um, participate in some of these analysis. One of the reasons why sometimes we would want to just sit back is that we want to make sure that whatever we say is informed by evidence-based research. Thank you. So, Thank uh, you very much. I take, is, I take note of that. I take note of that, and uh, we will, we will uh, consider that uh, more appropriately. Thank you very much, Dr. Ransford Jampo.
uh, is with the IPA and at the University of Ghana as well. Uh, thank you very much. So, um, if I start with you, Felix, you heard what he had to say. Uh, the reaction from the Flagstaff House or the Communications Ministry, your ministry, appears to, you know, have not been specific on the issues, rather just seeking to punish their reputation, attack their reputation as, as a credible institution. When, when, when Fitch, Fitch issues a statement, and they issued a statement right after the, what's the name, our thing with IMF was concluded, and they were, they were giving a caution. We don't say that people at Fitch have political interest. Well, first of all, Samson, as a government, we value people. It helps us in policy formulation and refinement. In fact, many people may not know that on our own, we undertake various surveys to gauge the public mood on a variety of issues. Sometimes, too, we engage in covert action to interact with the public and pick feedback. Last year, we engaged in what we call the Government for the People Forum. We traveled across the length and breadth of this country and interacted with people. So we pick feedback all the time. Every government needs feedback in order to govern in a way that is in tandem with the aspirations of the people. That said, it is important that when research comes out, and that research is deeply flawed, the conclusions reached are completely at variance with the reality. We point it out. That is what we did. In that statement, we did not call the IEA names. We strenuously disagreed with the conclusion that they had reached. We simply did not accept the conclusion that they had reached. First of all, when you say the office of the president is corrupt, you must define what you mean. When you go and interview unknown respondents, 1,200 of them, and I have my difficulty with these samples. You want to know the respondents? Of course, of course. Academic okay. explanations have been offered. Mm. But there is no way that, in practical terms, 1,200 people can represent the views of 25 million people. They can offer the academic explanation, but let anybody convince me that if you want to gauge the mood of 25 million people, you speak with 1,200 unknown people. The other point is that if the, the, res office if, if the re re result had been the presidency is the second most free corruption entity, you notice that, you you notice, you notice that as a government, we do not respond to polls. Mm. Even those that favor, and indeed, Transparency International, just a week ago, there was another poll that said that we were the third least corrupt country in Africa. We didn't issue a statement. We didn't comment on it. We think that those things have their place in our society. But back to this question. The office of the president does not have a transactional relationship with the people of Ghana. The IEA will be hard-pressed to show that any of the 1,200 people they interviewed had had any sort of interaction at all with the office of the president. <laughs> Second, the IEA was unable to pinpoint a single instance that remotely resembles corruption at the office of the president. So on what basis? No, are you sure about that? Yes, I'm challenging anybody to bring me evidence of a single instance where an act of corruption has occurred around the president. Reference has been made to very visceral, unscientific commentary by Imani. Now, when the office of the president has a budget and spends outside of that, that is not corruption. 100%. That is not corruption. That's the corruption. fact that I need five CDs, or you gave me I mean, five CDs to spend. And it turns out that I need, I need 10 Ghana cities. So I go for 10, sorry, 5 Ghana cities extra to meet the needs that I have so that the office can run and execute its mandate. Cannot be termed corruption. That's shallowness. It is absolutely ridiculous Shallow for Emmanuel or analysis. anybody to suggest that that is proof positive. And I think that that kind of vis visceral, unscientific, shallow commentary must give way to proper, nuanced work. It is not a place of civil society people to come and foist wrong perceptions on the people of this country. Like I said, the office of a president is not transactional in nature. All government agencies work up to it. If there are problems in agencies, we can deal with them. But don't lump everybody together and allege that the office of the president is corrupt when you don't have a shred of proof. That is why we okay. issued that statement and made it clear no, that, no. that it does mm. not help. Mm. When you want to fight corruption, mm. you don't go and force the perception. Why? We are aware of the paradox of exposure. Where <coughs> the more you expose the act and it gets reported, an impression is created that it is more pervasive. When in fact the reality is that in the past nothing was done. So it's first The harm was done, but no effort went into fighting it. The president has stated his intention that he will expose and deal with corruption. Why? We were in this country when a party chairman disclosed that he has gone to the castle at the time to collect money in sacks to go and prosecute political campaigns. Mm -hmm. And that the president was at the head 
of the cake back collection syndicate. That did not result in the perception that the Office of the President was corrupt. We were in this country when the President awarded himself a $65,000 gold medal. He actually caused five of those to be manufactured. $65,000 can build a three classroom <coughs> block. And yet, the IEA did not think that the Office of the President was corrupt at the time. None of those things has happened under President Mahama. So once we accept that corruption is a problem that must be dealt with. Indeed, because in the they did not conduct that, that uh, survey that time, they are not justified but I'm saying conducting that I'm, today. I'm saying that when you conduct a poll, the outcome okay. must reflect reality. Thank you. Your point is made. Now, uh, Koku, I, I don't know what, how you see this particular survey, and, and I, I'm hoping that we can look at it holistically together with uh, what the president has to say about corruption and his fight against corruption, and what is generally happening or a way of perception happening within the you know national sphere ministers being people having issues with you know the purchase of luxury vehicles to monitor electrification projects and all of these things see um the IEA they did some ranking the, that's based on the survey right uh, the police were the police are always confused. <laughs> yeah, everybody's the working pres with. Office of the president. <laughs> but, but do you accept that one as well? <laughs> I, I even have difficulty with that classification. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go have a stand now. The office of the president, second, mm. and tax mm. officials, third, mm. and members of parliament, fourth, mm. and others, of course, mm. followed in, in that order. Mm. I, I think that yeah. the. First of all, I asked the question last Thursday. When we see office of the president, what do we mean? What's the structure? I may be ignorant, and I will need some education from our friends who are in government. The office of the president, there are many other institutions that come under that office. Am I right? That's right, yes. Sometimes, what, is there an extension between that and the office of government machinery? The government yes, machinery, they, don't they, don't they come yeah. under don't the of the uh, some of those things come under the yes. office of the president. Even regional security. Yes. So, regional so, regional so there's a broad yes. structure out there. Some of those institutions are engaged in all sorts of businesses that bring them closer to the people as well and to other institutions. <laughs> so if you are looking at just the nuclear office of the president as out where, then the point Felix was making that they are not, they have no transactional business with the people may be valid. But the office of the president, in my opinion, perhaps those who were being spoken to, are looking at all the structures that come under the office of the president and that do business with different institutions of state that create some challenges. Mm. We need to go deeper. The IAEA has extended an invitation that come over, let's look at the methodology, let's look at the scope, let's look at all the empirical evidence that we gathered so that it can be useful for your own policy initiation and formulation. If I were in government, I would take that attitude. I would not be overly defensive just because of this ranking. I would not be. There are many other... This is very damaging, Kuku. Yes, I mean, no, because, it, it because does enormous damage. People when think there's office, no basis. You see, office of the president. I'm saying that's why I began with that definition. Perhaps... Well, they actually Perhaps. published, sorry to but they published yes, right. the results. Right. There's that's no indication they that they did the distinction no, no, no. or classification. That that's what, but I'm saying the people yes. who were being interviewed, mm -hmm. for all you know in their mind, were not looking at just the nuclear office of the president. That's what said it. He said that they were looking at the people around the sorry, president. Sorry. That's the <laughs> flask of house. Mm -hmm. That is what people have come to associate with the office of the president. Okay, so when you go and ask your question without you, breaking it down, sorry. you create yeah. that I don't know. So, I wasn't part of the survey. I don't know how they went about it. But when I hear office of the president, it goes beyond the nuclear office. That's mm. the way I perceive it. Right. There are many other institutions, many other uh, uh, officials who are connected to the presidency, who indeed do not work in the nuclear office, yeah. but whose conduct and activity sometimes draw the image of the presidency into disrepute. We know that. That's not corruption, is it? Uh, because the reference, for example, to, on, to the presidency... Uh, over no, spending is no, 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 no,
Uh-huh. That's not corruption okay. per se. Yeah. That's true. Being wasteful yes. and not being disciplined. Yes. And that's there's coming from another thing. There's even a distinction right? between misapplication and, and misappropriation. Another, another misappropriation. So those things can be dealt with. So, but that's the way you interrogate such issues and institutions that bring this service. It's not a whole hostile approach because you think you have been indicted. I don't think a government ought to take that posture. That's my view. But but you feel also yeah. that uh, what may be informing this perception by this respondent could also be their expectation of the president cracking the whip when it comes to administrative actions. He's got the power to suspend a minister <laughs> or uh, sack a minister when he feels that they are not doing Failure, you know, failure, failure by look good. Failure by the president to deal with those issues, and this is very. I have to be very careful. It's not the same as the presidency itself or the president himself being involved in corruption. Even though they, if that sure. failure, if it's not properly handled, can lead people to think of complicity mm -hmm. sometimes in some instances. You have to be very, very careful handling some of these things. But you see. Statements to lie, and they tell us that they are so, uh, many of those people take radio, TV, and news media as their sources. Right. So now, take for instance, when a leading member of the ruling party, out of anger, out of some challenges, tells the whole world that, look, the presidency is made up of friends, family, and things. He's talking of chronism. Chronism is not too far away from corruption. It leads to that perception. After all, here we are talking perception. Parliament is listed here as number three or four. If a leading member of parliament says that, look, we members of parliament are influenced financially, you remember that story? Right. It's carried by the media in a very massive way, it's perception. If you go out to do a survey and you ask people about parliament and its integrity, that particular statement made by a high-ranking parliamentarian will factor. That parliamentarian, they, they ended up telling us they were setting up a committee or they preferred the matter to the committee of privileges. Subsequently, we are told he's been cleared, but the damage had been done. So you see, this is how the whole uh, chemistry is. News media is the basis for those who were reacting to the questionnaire. Many people within the system itself, people who are well-placed, make allegations every day in and out against either the presidency or parliament or to the judiciary. And these things come on board and feed into the public mind. And that goes into surveys. Okay. Now, the but, attitude is mm. not to be hostile. Let's take it from me. Government mm. ought not to be hostile. Okay. Government should collaborate with some of these institutions, find out how these things happen. They may, it may be useful mm. for government eventually to formulate appropriate policies. Okay, in, in, in my back of the stage interactions to pick up, you know, people's views on some of these things and people who matter before this discussion, the re that is the reason I asked the question about people maybe wrongly linking the, presidents, the president to these acts and saying the presidency. Um, <coughs> the, this week or last week, for the most part of last week, it was the Dr. Tine J matter that was uh, yeah. uh, trending. Yeah. And somebody asked the question, the man revealed on joy that I just returned the car, you know, just uh, a day ago. And yeah. for them, a president ought to be swift. This was such in bad taste. You should just call the, the man in, in order or say, because of this act, which is imprudent, you'll be disciplined. Yes, yes. And that see, will influence the, the, the perception. Yeah, of course. People out there, many people will think mm -hmm. along that, those lines. For instance, the Ministry of Energy, mm -hmm. and for that matter, government, ought to offer an apology. They ought to retract the earlier explanations they gave. It turned out to be fraudulent. That's what that's what you have already said. I will bring yes. Another this the, Please allow me yeah, to moderate no, this. Those issue. were fraudulent. Yeah. They, mm. So they need to retract and apologize mm. because it was obvious they lied to okay. the public. Now, beyond that, the minister, on what basis did he take the vehicle? I'm told he has an, an extra one too, but we're talking here of the luxury vehicle. Right, right. Was it in line with conduct of ethics? that have been put in place. If not, the minister ought to be sanctioned. 
He ought to be sanctioned. No, no, no. But he could. The fact that he's no longer a minister. That how many? Well, you can be how much? But you see, thank you. you. We we'll use the right way. An entirely different okay. matter the, the, from what we are discussing. Thank you. Understand? The, no, but sorry, sorry, what sorry, if you want to bring another subject? No, no, we don't get the drift. I got a specific question. I ask him a specific question. You are intentionally switching the discussion. And I have every right to do so. Sure. Please. And I yes. thought I got his drift, right. you know, but we even drew the earlier extension that sometimes... a different matter. No, mm -hmm. no. You see, sometimes you people that think that failure mm -hmm. to reprimand mm -hmm. or to sanction mm -hmm. may, lead, may, may create the impression of complicity. Right. I think I made the early, that a, point earlier. Even though management. it is not an absolute... Does, it, does, it, does, it, does it not matter that at the presidency there is a code of ethics yes. for everybody yes. there to follow? Yes. If someone yes. breaches it... Mm -hmm. That person ought to be held to that, that rather than tag that to the president. That's the relevance of your question. Absolutely. You've established it. Absolutely. There's a linkage. Mm -hmm. So if people don't see you, I mean, dealing with errant ministers or ex-ministers, it can fuel the perception that you are encouraging corrupt behavior. Okay. Now, but even that claim that errant on, officials are not allowed to. Hold on, no, hold on, hold on. no, it's in specific instances. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You, uh, see, the, this minister see, has not after, your, sorry, after your submission, you have made several <laughs> interventions, and I, I wish that we can take it uh, uh, from this point. Now, um, tied to the IEA uh, release, no, I'm going to Fifi Kwete. Tied to the IEA release, this is what the president has to, said, has to say about his fight against corruption. He says that corruption is a canker, that continues to plague our society, so he admits it, refers to President Kufo saying that we ought to, um, some time ago, the government pretends to pay workers and workers pretend to work. He says, these civil servants, because of the single spine salary structure, they have no longer justification to engage in the illegal tips, tips on quotes, and charges, charges on quotes of the public, uh, of uh, members of the public. What do you say? Uh, are you going back to the state of the nation or you are now asking? Because I want to be clear exactly what we're talking about here. Okay. You're talking about state of the nation well, in one breath. You're talking about presidency and IEA. We're and talking about and corruption and governance. And the president made some points right. on corruption. Right. In the state That's what of I'm nation, reading. Yeah. Corruption and governance. Anyway, if I could start with the IEA. First of all, I think uh, uh, if you do not define exactly what you are looking for, it amounts to what you call garbage in, and all you get is garbage out. Mm. Okay. It, it's pretty obvious that IEA themselves uh, did not even do a thorough job in terms of clearly defining what they mean by the office of the president. So naturally, if you go out there and go and get 1,200 people and you throw in front of them office of the president, I can even tell you that there are people even who may even be uh, working in various ministries, and even they have to be helped exactly what you mean by the office of the president. So first, you need to be thorough, you need to be meticulous in defining properly what you mean by the office. Who of the talks president. about people's understanding of the office of the president? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so several it things, is your job. It is uh, your job as a researcher. Several agencies that come under the presidency, including SADA and so, right? No, but the point I'm making is this that you go averagely to any Ghanaian and mention of the president. What comes to mind? Yeah. What comes to mind? President Mahama. Yeah, like and so if you are a proper research agency, mm -hmm. A proper think tank wanting to seek opinion relating to office of the president, what you do is to be able to first and foremost clarify that, you disaggregate that, you explain exactly what you mean, and on the back of that you can get accurate response. But simply to go and throw in out there, I said it's, it's typical garbage in, and what you get is garbage out. So for me, really, uh, this, this, it, it, they have to come again in terms of exactly how they themselves go about explaining what they expect from the people. Because, I mean, average Ghanaian talking about office of the president, I mean, his, his mind goes to John Mahama. Now, is IEA telling us that they are saying John Mahama is the second most corrupt word? person in the country, is that what it, so you need to be clear exactly what it means. I think really it's a, it's, a, it's a poor job, it's a poor job done, and that poor job is coming from they themselves. And uh, that draws my attention to again what came up during the discussion about what a perception that was because you over, overshot your exactly. budget, you are corrupt. I mean that is the most lazy, the most yes. shallow analysis anyone can make, and that again is coming from another think tank. You see, that, brought, that brings me to the earlier thing I said, is that in this country, we are so quick to, as it were, give labels, think tank and expert, you know, a think tank and expert, and then you go into the essence of what they do, and you find nothing but laziness. 
just laziness of the highest order. How on earth can overshooting budget such, I mean, just turn into corruption? And this, this is supposed to be an individual or a group of people who are supposed to be taken serious. As far as I'm concerned, this is nothing but laziness. And that's all I say about it. <laughs> OK. Um, I, I know you would come find a way to come back in and to seek another opportunity to speak. Um, I, 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 I did a link. No, speak to this. I did a link. No, allow me. Allow me a little more time. I did a link to the president saying that because of the single spine salary structure, tips and charges, charges on court, should be stopped. Uh, uh, members of the civil, uh, what do you call it, uh, civil servants, do not have the justification anymore to be doing these things. Yeah, I mean, on that score, to be honest, uh, first of all, I mean, I think as a country, uh, we have historically excused uh, uh, some of these, what I call, wrong behavior uh, on the back of uh, uh, salaries are not good enough. I think it's not excusable. Mm. Okay, we are not the only people whose salaries have challenges. There are people in different parts of the world who also do not have all the one. You go to Asia, you go to Europe, you go to Latin America, and it's not in all those situations that you have this being justified. But we have justified it. That is, of course, into question the whole cultural values, the whole the whole behavioral mindset of our people. That is of need to change. We need to be able to define values and let our children grow with the consciousness that you don't justify wrongdoing on the back of problems that you are facing. Because that is very, uh, I mean, dangerous to a country. But the president said it rightly, and the point is this. Now, if you, if you see somebody who constantly felt that he needed to ask you to demand extra favors simply because his salary was not good enough, and, it subs and it suddenly that person has such a, a massive jump as far as the salary you get, and then the same behavior continues, then it shows that the, the behavior was not on the back of need. The behavior was actually on the back of greed and character. So I think really that's the point the president is making, that we need to rise I mean, above uh, this justification of uh, uh, our personal difficulties in order to be able to start bribes from people and do what we ought to do because that is the way it needs to be done. I think really uh, it's, a, it's a call in the right direction. Thank you very much. You're still here on News File. And uh, let me just go back to Dr. Ransford Jampo. He's on the line and he says he needs one minute intervention. Dr. Jampo, I hold you to one minute. So I didn't say one minute. Let me straight away say that I'm quite disappointed in the post train of Fifi Kweti and Felix. Indeed, it should be on record that I wanted to be part of the program, but for some last minute changes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not there. Now, when we talk about the office of the president, we are talking also about the institutions attached to it. Now, Fifi Kweke will do Ghana a lot of good by driving through the IEA Secretariat to take a look at the report and the methodology, study it them. and digest it before you talk about garbage in, garbage out. He attends our programs. Doctor, he has Dr. Jampo. Dr. Jampo. Dr. Jampo. Dr. Jampo. Sorry, Dr. Jampo. Dr. Jampo, hold on. Hold on one second. You also don't take their criticism, criticism mm -hmm. which appears to be genuine, that Appreciate. you take an amorphous, no, uh, an amorphous representation of what represents the presidency. So, so the onus is on you. Take the opportunity and explain what exactly it is. Is that not the case? And publish the results in this entirety. And we are saying that it includes all the institutions attached to it. Okay. So it is important that you have that document and get to know the even operational definitions of the various institutions that we are talking about before you run us down. Okay. So, so before you interview a respondent, let let's have a dialogue, please. Let, Please, let's have a dialogue. Let's have a dialogue. Before you interview a respondent, you tell them that when we say presidency, we mean all the agencies like SADA, all of them which come under the president. Well, you can find out from everybody who does research that you don't just go if you really are seeking information. My question is a direct question. Yes, Please, can I have a direct exactly answer so. rather than a general exactly. survey? Yes, we uh -huh. do so. Okay. So, you did so. so. Am I saying what I'm saying is that it it would serve all of us good for them to come for the report and to read and digest it. 
No, but it publish a report. In, in our statement, we challenge him to publish a report. And uh, running people down when <laughs> findings do not um, go in your favor. But the point is that <laughs> the battle <laughs> against corruption would continue to be fought and lost if we assume this kind of posture. Thank you very much, now, Dr. Jampu. A quick response to Dr. Jampu, thank you very much. Now, no, uh, it's, it's, only it's, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. You see, the fairness I, can be stretched to a point. I, I, um, I, I, so sure, let's, let's hear no, you I, I, I just want to say that um, actors of uh, government, especially my brother who is a spokesperson of government, should be very careful when he's commenting about works of uh, people, especially when it is about intellectual um, works. Right, they have um, a right to decide. No, they, 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 they have so to I determine they, how they, they approach it. Exactly. They have, but but as you said, mm. uh, perhaps there has not been enough engagement between them and IE. Perhaps that will do if they do both of these uh, points, which 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 are points of differentiation, can easily be ironed out. But but on the issue of perception of corruption, mm. I I just want to say that you see sometimes it is even good when the government is in it, its midterm that some of these issues come up. Because when they come up, they have enough time to be able to address them. And, and some of these things should be taken in good faith. So, so, so um, I just want to advise my brother on that. You know, he quickly said that if the office of the president overspent his budget, it is not an issue of corruption. I 100% I agree with him on that point. Wow. But then he goes on to say that, oh, somebody Oh, you, you say you agree or you disagree? No, no, agree. Uh, so no agree. what I'm saying, yeah, that, it's, it's, but then he goes further mm. to say that, oh, somebody bought uh, a chain for $65,000. and that then is extravagant. I cannot be defended. And, 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 and that's what he said. And that's what he don't call it corruption. That's what he said. It's not corruption. No. It's just extravagant expenditure. Good. So, so, so the point I'm making is that, you see, when, when you are in government and you are criticized, you have to be very measured with your choice of words and what have you. But coming back to the issue of corruption, right. you see, the perception of corruption may not necessarily reflect actual corruption, but there are things which are happening. You gave a, a typical example of a former minister of state that went away with a, a luxurious vehicle. I, certainly, I, 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 I cannot fathom how it can happen under any strict um, environment, because this man has been out of government for over six months. And he was driving away an official vehicle. So even 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 if if the presidency is not even aware of that, the ministry where he hesitated, do they not have a use of that vehicle? Because by practice, four by four vehicles are not taken away by use, its users. So certainly somebody should have cracked the whip. And why was the whip not cracked? That is the question that we are asking. You see, if you're talking about areas of corruption. I will want to say that one area where perhaps we lose a lot of money is about uh, uh, during our procurement processes. Of course, um, the MPP administration tried to bring the Procurement Act, and I know that um, there are efforts to review the Procurement Act. Um, Parliament is currently. It didn't it. try to bring it. Did. It, it did. It brought it. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is it, that they there ignored are, it. There, most there, of their transactions. No. No. Who, who <laughs> ignored it? Even, like the, even, like the even, 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 sole sourcing should no longer be done without recourse to cabinet. And that, that, that was a way to check That has been, that has been enforced, actually. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but, but why should we resort to that when perhaps we could use more efficient method of procurement? But even that, let, let me give you a typical example. Let's take the road sector. Mm -hmm. During the era of Rollins, mm -hmm. a kilometer of, of asphalted road cost around $600. And that could for it averaged 880, sorry, for $480. As we speak now, a kilometer of asphalted road is costing around $1.2 billion. Uh, 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 million, uh, dollars. No, I am not, come again. I, I say not, $600 or $600,000. So $600,000. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was, you said, under Rollins, $600,000. Yes, and then and under Kufour, Kufour was $400,000. $480,000. $480,000. Mm -hmm. $480,000. Yeah, yes. Mm. And, as speak, mm -hmm. and as we speak now, it is about $1.2 million 
dollars per kilometer. And that is evidence mm -hmm. of corruption. This, this, no, 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 please. I am saying that that is why we have to watch the issue of what so source. Because, because if these were quoted in Ghana cities, I would have agreed that, yes, the city's value may not necessarily be stable. But this is quoted in the most stable currency. So, so what's the, so, point, so of, what, what what's the point of what, this? That, sorry, what's the point of sorry? What's the point of this that's reference? The if you, if you are not sorry, of what's the point of this reference? If your intention is not to bring it to the corruption yeah, discussion, a the while ago you just pointed out to him that his reference to President Kufuor buying a chain, whatever, however you want to call it, was wrong because that's no, also not no, corruption. No. The, the point I was making is that yes, earlier on he had made a point that somebody said the presidency overspent its budget and that it, it was an act of corruption. But he himself also went further saying that no somebody bought a chain. Of course, it was like he personally went to a market and they decided course, that this is the particular is. type of chain I want. And then we know what the facts are. But so what the facts are, it was yeah. any case was budgeted for. It was budgeted it for. Was budgeted for. And it was within the budget. The point I am making is that for yourself as president, no, as a government, we should begin to question We should begin to question certain things. How comes that under somebody's administration, a, a kilometer of asphalted road was costing so much, and now it is costing so much. I personally think that if I were in government, or if I were the president, I would have perhaps asked my minister of rules, how come these figures are coming up? Because at the end of the day, it will also fuel the, the, the perception of corruption. Don't forget. This is not forget consultants. Don't, don't forget. It goes through no, no, I know. I know. Yes, also, I, I, yes, I, just I know. Be trying to show you. So, so right. why, is it that, why is it that we do not allow it to go to... It's not the all that should be competitive. Who is a no. civil engineer and a former My Ghana brother. Highways Authority employee came out and said that he has verified those prices and that indeed every quotation that the ministry has given him that was accurate. No, he even granted that he made that statement. It was in reference to a particular. He has worked at the Ghana Highways Department. It was in reference to he made it. Yeah, he made it, but it was in reference to. Welcome back. How time flies. We're just uh, running out of time at this point, but a few of your messages here. Uh, Charles Ni Otokono Mensa says that I just don't understand the posture of government when it comes to research findings, especially when it does not favor them. They should take uh, Kweku's advice and contact IEA instead of undermining their credibility. I'm highly disappointed uh, in you guys. Uh, Joseph Apia uh, Beidu says, uh, it is those who don't understand the value of research findings that make uh, ignorance, that will ignorantly make shallow analysis. No wonder Nemesis is catching, app appointing government communicators. Uh, not clear really with that. Park, we see uh, that the Diasempa Apia says, you call that hope of the nation address, a state of nation address. Um, Abdul Aziz says, please tell Honorable Bewa that if they had added at least 50 megawatts of energy every year from 2001 to 2008, we will not have been where we are today. It was absolutely a failure on the part of the Kufour government. And that's Aziz in London. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Katie, Katie Hammond says that the NDC has done only 2.1 percent of. <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, Bonti Benjamin says, "I hope the EC will learn uh, will learn that it is the rule of law that rules and not the rule of man." Al Haji Ali Ishak Abdallah says, uh, "I like to know whether the president uh, re what the president read." was a state of the nation because it looked like state of Dubai 
or an Arabian country. <laughs> Ghanaian. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Well, it's a reflection of I what think I think is a joke. I think we can, we, can, we can end the text messages here. Incredible. And then we'll continue. Um, you, you said I, I, I stopped you at a point which was too, oh, 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 it was in full flight. Too, uh, <laughs> too bad. So give me a minute right. of what you wanted to finish. Yeah, that, I, I, I just wanted to say that if really government wants to fight uh, corruption, mm. perhaps area, uh, they, they, they should watch procurement. Mm. That is perhaps the best way they can reduce this incidence of corruption in the nation. Okay. Okay. I will give them every support so, that they will require to do that. So that's for emphasis. You are really repeating. Uh, someone is reminding all of us that we should not forget that Sorry. the Corrupt Scholarship Secretariat is at the office of the <coughs> president. Again, uh, they are mentioning again, several another, others. You another, say corrupt, but you haven't another, said another, why it is corrupt. Another, okay, thank have. you. Thank you. We have uh, barely four oh, minutes so to end the show. Yeah. Our very final topic was to look at Yao Osafo Mahfo's comments that have attracted a lot of uh, criticism as preaching very dangerous uh, politics. Uh, because of the lack of time, Great. Felix, do one minute. Sam, I mean, the, the, the tape has done enormous damage to the reputation of the MPP. Unfortunately, they have not helped themselves by their failure to offer a strong response to that kind of thing. Because as in the party? Absolutely. What they should have done was to call out Mr. Osakuma for condemn him, compel him to apologize, and then apologize to the people of Ghana. The matter would have died. He says the tip is doctor. Again, that even worsened his case. <laughs> you see, it, 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 I'm, and I, I'm sorry to have to say this, but he came across as a dishonest person who didn't want to take responsibility mm -hmm. for his actions. I think that he just have owned it, indicate that he did not mean any harm by what he said. Apologize and then move on. Don't come and deny what is so obvious mm. that everybody can attest to. Go, go, don't, you, don't you agree with that? The suggestion that is doctored sounds false. a bit yeah. very bizarre and strange. Yeah. No, I've stated my yeah. point right. on that. Mm. It's the same way when we were being told that uh, what the president said in Kumasi had been doctored. In fact, who the police I CID. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 just that one is not police CID. Yes, right. uh -huh. that one organized or initiated investigations into that so-called doctor tape. Uh -huh. where, where are the results? Okay. So as I stand here, I don't I know the truth. I your original tape. No. Everybody has okay. The police so, CID. So, 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 of the investigation that will settle the issue mm. so let's put that aside but of course i have said that i don't think the osafu mafu uh, tape was doctored mm -hmm. and even if it was in terms of cut and paste well, the contents of even the cut and paste is not good enough i don't think that's anything but i'm not sure whether it is the party that takes responsibility it may have some collateral damage on mm. the party that's true okay. but i don't think you can accuse the party as a corporate entity of originating that. Some say you are wrong on that because it affects the party going into the I said the collateral damage. Uh, That's what I meant by collateral damage. damage. Yes. Okay. Now, that thank you. Thank fine. you very much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we are unable to continue on this subject. And we, we presume that uh, our listeners are already aware of that. Oh, so you know. Some of you may have already heard it or read <laughs> oh, the chat. That's exactly uh, the reason why you placed it. it at the last um, moment because you didn't really want a discussion on this. Okay. 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 You didn't want a discussion on this. Okay. That's dangerous. That's why we do this. Can we do this? Can we do this? Yes. You didn't want a discussion on this. That's why you what is, what is wrong about that? That's wrong. <laughs> because it's a major issue. <laughs> don't worry. You don't need to tell me what is major. You don't need to tell me what is major. Gentlemen, sorry. Gentlemen, 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 sorry. Gentlemen, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. My answer as always is produced by Latida, and you can call them 020-433-6444. We are run out of time. Have a good afternoon.